Good evening. Welcome to the Tuesday, August 8th, 2023 meeting of the Chappaqua Central School District Board of Education. Um, the board has been in executive session since 545. Um, can I have a motion, please, to reopen the public meeting? All in favor? Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'm turning it over to Lisa Elsner. Okay, um, <laughs> that brings us to the president's report. So, that's me. Um, good evening. I hope that everyone is enjoying a wonderful summer. It is still summer. Um, I want to start by acknowledging that there have been a few changes in building leadership this summer, and that we know that that can be disconcerting for everyone, for our students, our parents, our faculty, and our staff. We have all been fielding a lot of questions and understand that people want information most often to be supportive. Please understand, we do not enjoy telling people that we cannot share all of the information, but we must be respectful of people's privacy. That said, we are confident in and excited about the building leaders who will be in place for September. You have our word as a board that we will always share as much information about any situation as we are able to. Please understand that when we tell you we can't tell you, it's not out of malice or a desire to withhold information. That is never the case. If we cannot answer a question as fully as you would like, it is really because we are not able to, either for legal or privacy reasons. And please respect that, even if it is frustrating, which we know that it is. I want to speak briefly tonight about a few other communication-related concerns. We are making an effort this year to streamline our lines of communication while simultaneously, hopefully, making them easier for the community. If you have a question, concern, or complaint about your child or children's education, the best place to start is at the classroom and or building level. That doesn't mean that if you don't get a response or one that you find helpful, that you can't then escalate it to a central administrator or the board. But our first question is going to be, have you spoken to someone at the building level? And if the answer is no, that will be advice, our advice to tell you to do and then to come back to us. Obviously, there will be some exceptions. But since COVID, there's been a flurry of people reaching out to the central administration without ever trying to work through issues at the building level. Email has made everyone accessible at a moment's notice, but think about what it would have taken your parents to reach out to the superintendent of schools, first having to make a phone call appointment through the office staff. The role remains the same. Our central team works 24 seven for this district, truly, and they do an incredible job, but it is not their job to be the front line of addressing parent complaints and concerns. They are the last line if something can't be addressed by the building level administration or by bringing your concerns to the board. So let's talk about us. We are your liaisons to the district and the administration. We say at every meeting that you're always welcome to reach out to us or to come to a meeting. But we know that many people don't feel comfortable just giving us a call and speaking publicly at a meeting has its pluses and minuses. So we're rolling out a third option this fall, office hours. We will be sending out an email to the community outlining what office hours will look like in more detail and with information on how to sign up so you don't have to take notes. But briefly, we will be holding two office hours a month at the Ed Center, one morning and one evening. Each will be staffed by two board members so we don't run afoul of open meetings law. But whoever is there will report back to the full board confidentially. You will need to sign up for a slot in advance, but we will leave the link to sign up live until shortly before the office hours. We are planning to hold them September through November as a trial period, and then we'll take December to regroup and figure out what worked and what didn't, and the best way to move forward. We hope that providing this forum will alleviate some of the frustration around communication and allow us to have some of the conversations that are not appropriate for public comment. 
As I said, more information will be forthcoming probably around the time that school reopens. That's all I have for this evening. We hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the summer. There's still a few weeks of summer left, and I, for one, am not letting go of it easily. We are excited for opening day and for the year ahead and look forward to seeing you all back in September. Okay, thank you, Hillary. I am now going to open the hearing on the Code of Conduct and the Safety Plan. This is a regulatory requirement for New York State. And so I just want to highlight, we have no adjustments to our safety plan that are significant moving into next year. From this year, all of that is, pre is prescribed to us. Um, by state requirements, but we do have some adjustments to the code of conduct. So I would like to share those at this time. And then between now and the 31st, we're, we'll continue to take community feedback. This has been posted in the paper. It's been posted on our website. And so um, we welcome the community to share with us any of their thinking around what I'm presenting tonight or what they're viewing online. And um, the policy committee will certainly take that into consideration. And so uh, this year, the policy committee looked at our data from 2023, um, 22-23, we got feedback from our administrators on our uh, discipline interventions, and then we met with Insight Educational Group to talk about um, some of our policies that are in place for next year and um, around the Code of Conduct, and we are recommending some adjustments. So the first um, recommendation is that we remove any language that um, doesn't allow for students to engage in a restorative process. Uh, if they reach the superintendent's level for an intervention, which would mean that I, I would meet with them um, and their parents around an infraction that uh, may result in a suspension greater than five days out of school. And so we felt like it was important that students have the opportunity to, uh, in certain cases, be able to participate in a restorative process where there could be some deep learning around um, the incident that occurred to help them regroup and refocus and be returned to the community as a, a proactive uh, partner with us as we move forward in their education. So we are recommending that I, I be able to um, craft plans with students at, at, at the discretion at my level um, when they have certain incidences that need a higher level of intervention. Ooh, something happened. Um, and so that's the first recommendation. The principals can already engage in that process with our kids, and it's, it's happening um, moreover at the high school than it is at the, at the middle level. The second adjustment is around, oh, now, can you just move me, please? Oh, now, now in the code of conduct, we have a, like an addendum or an attachment that talks about like a range of, uh, of consequences associated with certain infractions. So um, in moving forward, we updated some language around um, the around graffiti and also around students' uh, inability to record our staff using their cell phones or to take um, pictures of them without their explicit permission. This is implied in the, in the code of conduct right now. However, we felt like based on some of the um, conversations we've had to have with kids and our parents, a more explicit definition would, it would be helpful um, for students so there would be some real clarity around you know, what they are and are not able to do within the context of the classroom setting, especially since most of our students have their own personal devices. And then with our, our, our graffiti language, we just wanted to expand this so that um, to address some of what we also experienced last year, particularly at the high school level, as we look to intervene when students um, create or display images that are harmful to, to, to other groups of our students based on their identity. And then probably the biggest shift that we worked on Insight with is we're now um, evolving our response when students engage in um, incidents that are categorized as discriminatory or hate speech or um, they have an element of bias attached to them. And so um, what I would share with you is that m the majority of the incidents that fall within this category are hate speech. And the policy was originally designed to um, protect and support students who were subjected to hate speech based on their identity. But what we were finding last year specifically is that the students who were uh, who this policy was intended to support and to protect were actually being um, held, a, held um, accountable to, to the policy itself. And so there was a, while its intent probably at the time when we 
crafted it was one of clarity and 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 um and lack of flexibility around our interventions, what we found over time is that that approach actually started to harm the kids that it was intended to be designed to support. And so what we'd like to do is we'd like to move for, forward with more of an in-school-based model for our middle school students on the first offense in both fifth, sixth, and seventh and eighth grade, but, but um, create a, a different intervention for our five, six students when compared to middle school. And then instead of having like a two offense um, chart, we pushed it out to three so that the students at the middle level wouldn't receive a, an out-of-school suspension until they reached either the second or third offense, typically. We also added a DEI learning experience at every, um, at every um, level of infraction here now that we've been able to move forward and hire two DEI coordinators and um, who will be on the professional development team. Um, who will be able to craft lessons and help our students learn from their behaviors. And then at the high school level, uh, we still felt it was important that our students be suspended out of school for their first offense, but we also added that DEI learning experience. And then we, we scaffold that out to three offenses of, as well. Um, just for the community's understanding, uh, we, for our high school students, typically uh, one intervention is enough. What we found was at the middle level, we had students who were engaged in multiple infractions over the course of the school year. Um, so it was important that we, we change our approach to help support students at the middle level a little bit differently moving forward. So um, this is our proposed response. Our K through four students, uh, our, our principals work with the central office to, de to determine what's most appropriate based on what happens. There's a lot of context involved with, when an elementary student engages in behavior like this um, around understanding and meaning and intent. Um, but we did feel like this is probably a better approach for us to be able to support our kids in a way that um, will increase the learning and support around making better decisions when you uh, make a mistake that has a larger impact on the community. And those are the significant changes within the Code of Conduct. So at this point, since we are in the middle of the hearing, do any members of the community have any comments that they'd like the board to listen to specifically on the Code of Conduct? Okay. Um, you can email the Board of Education um, and, and me. You just please make sure you do that before August 25th so that we can take that into consideration as I, I work to present the final code of conduct for the board's consideration um, at our next meeting. And then the district-wide safety plan is posted. There's not much change to it. Um, they're all, again, regulatory requirements from New York State. I did remove language in there that said we'd be notifying radio stations. That's outdated. We don't need to do that anymore because of our telephone system and social media. Um, but everything in that plan pretty much aligns with what we've done in the past. The building-specific plans are where our um, procedures and um, processes are outlined for each particular building to when they engage in certain emergencies and that's not public information um, but the this is like a broad overview of how we approach security and safety in this district so um, are there any comments on the district-wide safety plan from the community okay so at this point I'm going to close the hearing thank you for listening are there any other additional, is there any considerations from the board that you want to discuss publicly out, out loud? We're not acting on anything tonight, but we certainly, if there are any comments that you'd like the policy committee to hear um, around the code of conduct, we, you can share them at this, at this time. I have a question. Sure. I, I, I really like the changes to the consequences chart. I guess my question is, in terms of the DEI learning experiences, who's responsible for overseeing that? Would that be the DEI coordinator responsible for making sure it happens, or will it be the principal making sure it happens? So um, we have our K through six and our seven through eight professional developers, so they will be working with the building principal, um, depending on what happens on the most appropriate response, but they're in the process of working with Adam right now to craft um, interventions for our kids. And then um, we also know that we have Tanuke Copa in a, in a different role, but doing similar work. So there'll, there'll be times where she'll be involved too when, when students um, make an error that need that level of intervention. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, so I, I'm gonna continue with the superintendent's report if that's okay with everyone. So um, there's a few, very few highlights on the calendar, on the uh, agenda tonight. Uh, one of the most important, I think, pieces of information which Hillary alluded to in her opening is that um, Dr. Mazza is on leave and we are asking uh, Laurelyn Stewart, Dr. Stewart, who is the assistant principal of Horace Greeley High School to step in as um, the acting principal at this time. And she has agreed to do so. So I have her on the agenda for your consideration tonight. Um, Lynn has been in the district as a teacher, as a principal. She's also a parent who's had children who have gone through Seven Bridges and has children in Seven Bridges next year. So she has a great, I think, perspective to lend to the, the the Seven Bridges community. Um, I'm really excited that she um, is able to make this transition. I know that she's also a part, a part of Greeley, so we're, we're going to be working to um, have an interim replace Lynn um, in the near future, so I hope to have that on, a, on an agenda for your consideration as well. Um, but Lynn will, uh, if uh, pending her approval tonight, she'll be communicating out with the Seven Bridges parents and staff tomorrow, some opportunities to meet with her in the near future. So I'd like to, to welcome Lynn to this, to this role. And I, and I know that um, our community at Seven Bridges will be very pleased, I think, as they get to know her and her leadership style, um, as, as our families are at Greeley. Uh, and then I'd like to turn it over to Adam. At a previous uh, meeting, we appointed June, but I would like him to just share publicly about our new DEI a professional developer for our, our K-6 faculty. faculty. Yeah, so doc, thank you, Dr. June Wai. Um, we're excited to introduce her to the community. She comes to us with a uh, little over 14 years of educational experience. She's got um, a bachelor's from UC Berkeley, a doctorate from Columbia, a master's from Columbia Teachers College, um, extensive background in DEI. Her training is in ENL, teaching um, students that are learning English, um, which is also a, kind of rounds out our professional development team in a nice way. So we're excited to um, have her here. She's She's been very involved in community work on the community end of her own community, but also in education for her career. So we're excited to have her on board. We're going to have her um, with us for a few days this summer, and then she'll start, you know, when school starts up at the end of August. Thank you, Adam. Um, I also, there is a contract on the agenda. We are going to be partnering with Global Operations next year to help us um, with our safety and security procedures and uh, protocols throughout the district. So we're really excited to be um, entering into this engagement with this um, expert community um, of security professionals who will be uh, on site working with us as we work with our new security company to um, lift the level of our safety protocols and processes throughout the district. Um, I just want to, again, remind the community we are moving forward and having and st have started planning to um, have our license plate reader in place at Greeley, our school pass system in place for our students at Greeley. Um, we're in the process of installing our security barrier outside by the gym, which you can see if you're here. Uh, we have our lockdown hallway buttons in place at Greeley, and then we are in the process of also expanding our external alarm system. And then for our elementary and middle schools, just an update, we are still working on our contract with the town um, to have our shared school resources officers in place for our elementary and middle schools. Um, we will have our electronic locking system on all of our doors in place, we're almost done, and we'll have our lockdown hallway buttons in place before we open in September. So I did wanna provide a brief update on where we are with our uh, security and safety um, initiatives over the summer. Uh, there are a number of, oh, so on, on the agenda tonight, we are doing a first reading of our regulation, which oversees our community's fees regarding facilities uses. We have nominal increases in um, what we're asking our community partners to pay to support their use of our fields. We have a 1% increase in our, <laughs> in our custodial fee to align with their contractual increase. And then our, our, our electric bill is just soaring. So uh, we have a 17% increase in our electric bill. So we need to pass those fees on to our community groups that are using our fields because we can't really pay for that. That's kind of outside the scope of what we're able to um, pay for within our budget. And so those are the only adjustments that we're um, asking the board to consider, not tonight, but on the 31st of August. This is the first reading in case um, 
the community would like to provide some input before we asked you to act on the on on the regulation. This is the only regulation that's approved by the board because it's a, a, it, it it involves fees. And then finally, we have a number of donations on the calendar from the Greeley Football Association. So I don't I didn't know what these were. So I just wanted you have a guardian cap, you have a soft cap. You have a sled, um, and so we appreciate the football association donating um, different items for our, our a football team to be able to use as we get ready to start um, our sports season on the 19th of August. And then I just want to remind our families that new family orientations on the 23rd, and then we begin our orientations for our students transitioning to new buildings on August 30th. And that is the end of the superintendent's report. So now I just want to transition over to the um, tax levy resolution that's on the agenda next, and that's item 5.32 on the agenda. And so I know Kathy is here to answer any questions. Um, Josh is not able to make the meeting tonight because he's uh, traveling, but this is where the this is the meeting where the Board of Education approves the um, tax levy and tax tax rates. Um, that align with the 2023-24 budget. Um, so at, at this point, do the, do the, does the board have any questions that they'd like Kathy to, or, or me to answer on the, on the resolution, which is item 5.32. So uh, Hillary, if you want, you can pull it out and, and do the roll call vote now. Okay. All right, so if there's no other, if there's no questions on the, on the tax cap, then that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you. Um, so that brings us to committee reports. Does anybody have anything to report? Nope. Okay. Well, that was, <laughs> that was fast. Um, that brings us to the public comment period. So we welcome public comments, and in respect for each other's time, we ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. Board members may also be contacted via email or phone. After the public comment period has been completed, board members may have a discussion amongst themselves regarding comments presented. So if anybody has a public comment, please come up and make it now. Hi, Tim McNamara. Had really a question for the administration. Uh, curious about how registration numbers have, you know, ended up towards the mid of the summer. I understand there was going to be a review of that, and curious if you can share now or at a future meeting where we are. Thank you. Curious. I don't know if people heard me or were listening. I was curious uh, where registration numbers are. I know you did hear. Okay. We haven't adjusted any of our sectioning at this time from our last meeting. So that's where we are. It's not a Q&A, so that's kind of like why you didn't get an immediate response from me, Tim. It's like a comment, and then we can comment back. So um, at this point, we haven't adjusted, and adjusted any of our sectioning for next year, um, but we still have some latitude if we need to, and we we'll continue to watch en enrollment. And Lisa um, gives a report to me weekly. Oh, I just keep forgetting to turn it on. That concludes the public comment period. Um, which brings us to approvals and ratifications. Um, can I have a motion, please, for 3.1 and 3.2, which are the minutes of the July 6th and July 20th meetings, respectively? Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Um, so I will move. 3.3, which is regulation number 7,000, which is what Dr. Ackerman spoke about in the superintendent's report, which is the schedule of fees for community 
use of district facilities. This is a first reading. Um, can I have a second? A second. Does anybody have any questions or thoughts on this? I remember asking this last time. Is there any reason why we wouldn't just round to a nice whole numbers on those amounts just to make it simple? Well, we could do that. We're just trying to make it like the actual cost so people yeah. understand like the formula, but I can round that up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll round it Just up. to make it simpler. <laughs> okay, yeah. no problem. I'll email Josh right now. Any other thoughts, questions? Okay, so we don't vote on that because it's nope. first reading. Okay, great. That brings us to four. Um, can I have a motion, please, for 4.1? Oh, is that me? Yeah, um, can I, I, I was just emailing Josh to round up. Sorry. Um, I recommend 4.1 instructional as presented. Can I have a motion for 4.1? Second? All second. Any questions, concerns? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. I recommend 4.2 non-instructional as presented. I move 4.2. Questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, this brings us to the consent agenda. The use of a consent agenda permits the Board of Education to make more effective use of its time by adopting in a single motion to cover those relatively routine matters which are included. Any member of the Board who wishes to discuss individually a particular piece of business on the consent agenda may so indicate, and that item will be considered and voted on separately, thus preserving the right of all Board members to be heard on any issue. So my understanding is we are going to have to pull out two items, but we move this first and then we pull two. We're pulling out two items. So, yeah. But I move it first, right? Okay. I'm going to move the consent agenda, which is items 5.1 through 5 point, bear with me, 38. <laughs> Can I have a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Now, I'm going to move that we remove two specific items from the consent agenda. No, I have to do it each one individually. What? Okay, I am moving that we remove items 5.15 and 5.32, which are the contract with Birchwood Swim and the uh, tax warrant to collect the tax levy. Can I have a second, please? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so let's vote on the which. For I'm now going to remove the remainder of the consent agenda which is 5.1 through 5.14, and then 5.16 through 5.31, and then 5.33 through 5.38. Yes. Can I have a second? Second. Any questions or concerns about the <laughs> remainder of the consent agenda? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, let's look at 5.15 first. Um, can I have a motion for 5.15? I move 5.15. Okay, so 5.15, I'm just going to read it, is be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby approves an agreement with the Birchwood Swim and Tennis Club for use by the Horace Greeley Swim Club, uh, High School Girls Swim Team during the 23-24 school year and authorizes the Board President to execute the agreement. Do we have any comments on this? Just that I need to refuse myself? Yeah, <laughs> yeah at this team. Matt needs to abstain. I need to abstain. Yeah. As this contract is <laughs> between Matt and his other capacity as the manager That's of correct. the Birchwood Swim Club yes. is, is why this whole rigmarole. Um, so my apologies. <laughs> Our apologies to you. Um, so are there any questions or concerns other than the fact that Matt is wearing two hats and is not going to vote on this? More than two, but just... <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 And we have to say abstentions. And any abstentions? Aye. Okay. All right. And that brings us 
to 5.32. Can I have a motion, please, for 5.32? I move 5.32. Okay, 5.32 reads, whereas the Board of Education does hereby approve the execution of the tax warrant to collect the tax levy for the 23-24 school year in the amount of $119,574,460 <laughs> for school district purposes and $3,544,337 for the Chappaqua Public Library purposes. So this has to be done as a roll call vote. Aye. 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 Okay. And that was the most confusing consent agenda I think we've ever had. <laughs> it was exciting. It was Good very work. exciting. Okay. That brings us to six. Um, can I have a motion, please, for items 6.1 through 6.7, which are acknowledging contracts uh, previously approved by the superintendent. All second. Any questions or concerns? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, um, that actually brings us to notice of future meetings. Our next meeting is Thursday, August 31st at 10 a.m. That's opening day for our faculty and staff, and we will be back here. Um, and our meeting after that is September 13th at 7 p.m., also here, uh, and that is the district performance report meeting. Can I have a motion, please, to adjourn at 7.37 p.m.? A second. All in favor? Aye. All right. We are adjourned. <laughs>